Hello there, everybody. This is Michelle with Unicorn Spit, the concentrated gel stain. I am here to show you how I did a technique on this old dresser that emulates a beautiful stormy sky or even a far off planet. This technique looks like clouds, just a symphony that's floating across the sky dancing with the clouds and the sunshine, getting ready to rain, perhaps, or maybe just getting ready to sprinkle our plants to make them grow. I love the design so much and I love doing this technique that I decided that I wanted to show you guys exactly how I did it. And I'm gonna show you on this piece of wood. The first thing that you do is take your bare wood. You could do this over existing finish too. I like bare wood because it gives it a more three-dimensional effect. You're gonna go ahead and get it wet with some water because remember, unicorn spit does come in the concentrate. It also acts as a wood conditioner, which is really nice. I take some little beads of colors. There's blue thunder and weathered daydream. And I'm following the lines of the actual wood grain. So I go with the flow pattern. I use double the amount of the whitening because it plays with the other colors and tones them down. I don't sell 50 shades of any color. You can always make them yourself. Doing little sprinkles of the white also makes it so that you get like these little puffy clouds. And of course, we want not only a silver lining, but a golden lining in our sky. So I added a little bit of my concept color, Zeus, which is also a concentrated gel stain. These are the very first metallic stains in the world. Now I'm putting a little bit of plastic wrap over the top of all of the colors. I call this the stain press and I discovered it while working with the elderly and disabled. It allowed them to be able to do really beautiful abstract designs without getting it all over themselves and sure shot every time it turned out beautiful. You just squish it around and make sure you get it to the edges. And when you pull off the plastic, you're left with a beautiful, beautiful design. And you can go as big or as little as you want. You can do the same design on drawers by just lining them up, taping them together, do your design just like you saw earlier. While it's drying, I'm going to make a little bit of DIY chalk paste. So I've put some of my metallic gel stain, Zeus, in a little bucket, one ounce to be precise. Added three scoops of my perfect stencil powder and stirred it up. And what's funny is that it starts looking like cottage cheese. I know it sounds super gross, but put the lid on and let it sit for 20 minutes. While it was rendering, I used my blow dryer to go ahead and get my design completely dry. You can see that unicorn spit tells you when it's dry. It goes from shiny to a very matte finish. This is part of the design to make things easier for you. No mistakes. Now 20 minutes has passed. I stir up my um, once grody looking chalk paste and now it's beautiful, fluffy, and just how you like it. Here's our design now. And as you can see, I had a couple little hairs in it What's nice is that there's no plastic binders, so you can easily just dust the little hairs right out. I made my own stencil using my screen stencil maker. I'll give you guys a link for that. Then you just pop it on, make sure that there's no bubbles. Of course, these are reusable and self-adhesive. I add a little dollop of our DIY chalk paste. Use a silicone spreader and just push it right through that screen. And what's nice is that you want to pull it off when it's wet, but you don't have to wash your um, screens immediately. Even if the paste dries in your screen a week later, you run it under some water and it'll be brand new. Scrape off what you don't need, put it back in that resellable package, peel it off, and there you have this beautiful little custom design. I like to recycle. 
So if I see something that catches my eye, and of course, shiny things always do, I tend to collect them like I did this broken glass door. I believe it was mirrored, but it was almost blue. It was so beautiful that when I saw it, I was like, I'm gonna go pick up as much of that as possible. So I did. <laughs> and I've been using it in my artwork for a while. I just took that glass. Of course, if you're not familiar with glass, you probably do wanna wear gloves, but I am such a daredevil, I'll tell you what. So I just took my design, which is a little cross, and sprinkled it on there and got it good as possible. I wanted it to make it a little bit chunky, because I did so thick, I used glaze coat, which is a two-part epoxy. I mixed it up following the directions and I poured it mostly on the cross area. Now epoxy will self-level, so you don't have to worry about that. You just wanna make sure that it is on a level surface and raised up as well. And then you just spread it out all around on it. Here I used a silicone barbecue brush, which is super funny, but they work wonderfully. You're also gonna wanna make sure you get the sides so that it has a nice finished look. And you can use your gloved hand to do that. If you end up with bubbles, which most likely you will when using epoxy, just take a little creme brulee torch and just wisp it over the top and you can watch all those bubbles pop. When I got done, I decided that it didn't look very finished. So I came back while the epoxy was still wet and I added a little bit more glass down there at the bottom to give it a base. Of course, if you're not embedding glass, you can always seal with polyurethane or wax. I let it sit overnight, so it was about nine hours. And as you can see, it's all dry. I just tapped it off until any of the loose pieces of glass just fall right off. I'm just really digging it. And what I'm really loving is that when that um, DIY chalk paste and the metallic dries, it looks like foil. But look at that glass. Doesn't it just look like some type of jewel? And I'm really loving the sky effect. It's very 3D. It's kind of hard to catch on camera, but you guys can really see it. It turned out to be just a stunning little piece of work. I love it. And as I said, um, before you epoxy, you want to make sure that you have it up on stilts. I take a cookie sheet and I put it into a recycled plastic bag and I use that as my dam so that none of it goes anywhere. You don't wanna get a spill of epoxy, trust me. I've dealt with that before, it's terrible. So all I do is just get a very large cookie sheet, put it in a bag, that way I can easily just turn it inside out and be able just to throw it away and have no mess, easy cleanup. Epoxy, you do want it to drip over the sides and you don't have to hesitate about those little drips. All I do is take that same creme brulee torch that I use to pop all the bubbles. I get it warm and use a metal scraper just to scrape them right off. You just gotta get them pretty warm, not so hot that it boils, but just warm enough that it melts it and you can easily clean it off and then it'll be ready for you to paint the back. But here it is, all beautiful, absolutely stunning. I posed it with my little brass unicorn and oh gosh, I just love it. And just remember, no matter what, God will see you through. Unicorn Spit is kind of a shape shifter of art mediums. It can be manipulated to do leather, canvas shoes, white washing and tie dyeing, safe for your pets because there's no odor. You can make it machine washable by mixing fabric fuse, doll up some lamps, or even a wedding dress. It won't even change the fill of feathers. You can do your wildest designs or stain everything one solid color. Get earthy tones on mahogany or vibrant colors on white woods. You can even go over MDF. There really isn't anything off limits for unicorn spit as long as it has some very good bones. 
with it being so concentrated, you can do gigantic pours on any type of surface. With mix ratio of one part unicorn spit to four parts flow medium, it's so concentrated. You can even do your concrete floors. Bricks aren't off either, or metal tumblers. So versatile and clear, you can even stain gems. If you've always wanted to play with stained glass, here's your chance. You can even dazzle up beautiful stemware. You can personalize little trinket box by blending the colors so easily. You can get some very rustic and beautiful designs. Show Shugibon is one of my favorites. If you're into vinyl, you can use it to stencil super easily or epoxy the vinyl right on. It also creates a beautiful base for those gorgeous textured rollers. Until I see you guys again, be good, be blessed, and always let your creative juices flow. Goodbye.